Hi guys, this is Armand Gudzinia. Today I'll be showing you how to use the Galaxy Web Server to do some RNA seq analysis. This procedure is very simple and you don't need any sort of programming or coding knowledge at all in order to get it done. All you need is a strong internet connection. This tutorial will be composed of two main parts. First, I'll be discussing some basic concepts about RNA sequencing analysis. And then second, I'll be showing you a step-by-step -step guide on how to do the RNA-seq analysis on the Galaxy web server. Without further ado, let's jump right in. So this is the pipeline I use for RNA-seq analysis. There are several different pipelines available out there, but this is the one that I use and I know can work on the Galaxy web server. So the so first two tools I use would be FastQC and Trimomatic. Now I use these tools to assess the quality of the reads and then to trim out adapters and low quality reads. I have to do this early on or else it will muggle up and bias my downstream analysis. And then secondly, I, I align the reads to the reference genome using HiSat2. After alignment, I quantify how many reads align to each gene using string tie and then perform differential expression analysis using DESeq2. So what DESeq2 does is that it compares how many reads align to a certain gene in setup A versus setup B. And then finally, I can upload the lists of differentially expressed genes to either gProfiler or Panther for pathway enrichment analysis. Now to give you a more visual idea of what I'm talking about, I made this animation for you. So imagine these are your raw RNA sequencing reads. This is for your untreated setup, and this is for your drug-treated setup. As I said, the first thing we need to do is to trim out all of these adapters and low-quality reads. So imagine these gray bars are your adapters. So we will trim them out using Trimomatic, and then align them to the reference genome using HiSat2. After alignment, we can then count how many reads align to each gene using string tie. So here for gene A, we have two counts. Here for gene B, we have four counts. Here for the drug treated setup. Here for gene A, we have five counts. For gene B, we have one count. With the counts, we can then finally perform differential expression analysis using DEC2. So as we see for gene A, its expression went up. So it was upregulated. For gene B, on the other hand, its expression went down. We set an adjusted p-value of, let's say, 0 0.05, and then we get our list of significantly differentially expressed genes. So, so far, all of these steps have been done on the Galaxy web server. So, you don't need any sort of programming or coding background to get all of this done. All you need is a strong internet connection. And so finally, we submit our lists of significantly differentially expressed genes to gProfiler, and then we get our, our pathways that were enriched upon drug treatment. Now that we understand how to perform this analysis, I can then show you a step-by-step -step guide on how to perform RNA-seq analysis using this pipeline on the Galaxy web server. Now we're ready to use Galaxy for RNA-seq analysis. So let's go ahead and go to galaxyproject.org and then press use. Now there are three main web servers for the Galaxy project. Um, there's the European web server, the main web server, and the Australian web server. The one that I use is the European Galaxy web server because I'm based here in the UK, but you could also use all of these other web servers. So I press here, then I go to the European web server. So the first thing you need to do is to uh, register an account if you still haven't done so. So just go here and register. I have already registered an account, so I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm just going to log in. So now we're here at the main interface for the Galaxy web server. Um, first thing we need to do is to upload our data sets. So to do that, we press this button, and then we choose our files. So my files are uploaded here. So I select all of them. <clears throat> it's good to label your files properly so you won't be confused. 
and then press start. This will take some time because, because as you can see the files are quite large so be patient but this will upload. So guys the upload has finished and we can see that the panel bar has updated to include our six data sets control one two three and treated one two three. If you press this view data icon we would see how our raw RNA seeks data set looks like as can be seen here. So the next step would be to determine the quality of the reads. And for that, we would use a tool called FastQC. So FastQC. So over here, we select which data sets we want to analyze. So if we select this, this shows which data sets we can analyze, but we want to do it quicker. We want to select multiple data sets to analyze all at once. So we press multiple data sets and highlight everything. We don't pretty much need to change all of these other uh, uh, panels over here. I'd suggest to keep that as default and then press execute. Okay guys, so FastQC has finished analyzing our data set and it has outputted the results here in our panel bar. So for example, if you were to check this data number seven, FastQC on data one webpage, it shows us this report so it says that our rna seq data was generated using sanger illumina um, the sequence length was 59 and the gc content is 55. it also gives us all of these other information per base sequence quality per base quality score per base and content all right i won't go into so much detail about how to read these plots but if you want to learn more i would suggest that you go and click this link which would give you more information on how to read these plots. So let's move on. The next step would be Trimomatic. So let's type in Trimomatic here. So the data set is single-ended. So if it's pair-ended, we select pair-ended. But this data set is single-ended. And then we select multiple data sets and highlight everything. Just keep everything as default and press execute. So guys, Trimomatic just finished its job. So all the results are here. So if you were to check the files, Trimomatic on control one, the results pretty much look the same as the original raw sequencing files, but we can notice it. Trimomatic already removed all the low quality and all the adapters from our reads. So next we perform sequence alignment. For that we use HiSat2. So click HiSat2. So it asks for a reference genome. So for this we're going to align it to the human genome. So I type HG then I select HG38, so that is the latest version of the Human Genome Assembly. And then the data is single end. So select the FASTQ files. So we want to align the trim files over here. The data is again unstranded. If you don't know if your data is unstranded or forward reverse stranded, or if it's single or paired end, you can always ask your sequencer Oftentimes, they will tell you the type of sequencing that they will do on your samples. So again, I just leave all of these other uh, options as default and then press execute. So HiSat2 just finished the alignment files and the alignment files also called BAM files are here. So if you were to look at one of the BAM files, these files just show where in the human genome each read aligned to. We don't need to know how to read this file because it's the software and computer's job, job to do so. So now we proceed to quantify how many reads align to each re region with string tie. So go to string tie, input mat reads. These are your BAM files. Inputs contain long reads, just keep it as default. Strand information, our files are unstranded. So use reference GTF. In this case, 
it doesn't have any built-in file so we have to download it from the net so for that we go to gen code version 32 and then this is the version I download the main annotation file so show in the finder so I unzip this file okay so now we can proceed to upload it so this will take a little bit of time because uh, it's 1.2 gigabytes the upload of the reference file just finished so we can select it here so use a file from history you select gen code version 32 use reference transcripts only select no just leave everything as default and then press execute and time merge step is now done you can have a look at the results so this just basically unifies all the transcripts built to one file so here for example at chromosome 1 it identified a transcript that started at this position and ended at this position located on the positive strand with the following ID M string one transcript ID this and this gene name so the next step is then to perform another round of string tie quite similar to the one we did earlier so again, we select all our BAM files. Again, it's unstranded. And for the reference genome, we use one from history, but use the string time merge file. And then for use reference transcripts only, this time we can select yes. Then an output additional file for differential expression. Yes, we select DESeq2 because we'll be using that. And then the average read length of our raw reads were 50. So we do that. And again, place everything as default. Advanced options, keep everything as default. And then execute. So the string tie step is now done. So the output of string tie would be three files for each of the in, uh, reads that we had. So it had an assembled transcript file, it had a gene counts file, and a transcript counts file. The only file that we would need for our DEC2 step would be the gene counts file. Let's take a look at one of them now. So basically the gene counts file would be a list of the, the gene names followed by the number of reads that aligned that gene so for example for this gene it had eight reads and for this gene it had 11 reads for the DC2 step it would be it would be very helpful if we change the name of these files because this file these file names are quite long so I know that this file it's for control one so let's just name it control one treated replicate three. Okay, so now we can perform the EC two. So the EC two. So factor name, so basically our treatment, so in this case it would be drug. Factor level, treated. So for this setup, we, for this uh, factor level, we will just select the gene counts files for the treated setup. So for that, 
treated 3, treated 2, and treated 1. It's okay. And this would be our control setup. So for that, we select control 3, 2, and 1. So keep everything as optional. Choice of input data. If you use string ties, so select this. Visualizing the analysis results, yes. You can also select yes for these other uh, options. But for simplicity, I'll just keep them as default and no. Um, and press execute. So the dsq2 job just finished, and it gave out two main files, a dsq2 plots file and a dsq2 results file. Let's have a look at the plots file. So the plots file is just a five-page PDF containing various important plots. The first one is a principal component analysis plot, and it just shows you which samples tend to cluster together. Second is a sample to sample distances plot. Again, quite similar to a PSA plot because it just shows again which sa samples tend to cluster with each other. The third plot is a dispersion estimates plot. It can be shown, but it's over here dispersion estimates plot. Dispersion estimate. And while the fourth one, is a histogram of p-values plot. So the taller the bars are over to the left, it means that the more genes were significantly differentially expressed, it means it has a smaller p-value. Whereas if you have taller bars over to the right, it means more genes were not significantly differentially expressed. And this is an MA plot. So each dot corresponds to a gene, and the more red dots you have, the more genes were significantly differentially expressed. The main file that we'll be using is the dsc 2 result file. So it's just a huge table. First column is your gene ID. Second column, second column is the base mean expression for that gene. Third column is the log to fold change. So if the log to fold change is negative like this one, it means that this gene was downregulated. The log to fold change is positive like this one, it means that the gene was upregulated. If it's zero, then it did not uh, change in expression. The standard error, the wall statistic, p value, and the adjusted p value. So the D62 automatically sorts your genes according to those with the highest log to fold change and the most significant adjusted p value. So this gene ID M string 18261 was the one that was most significantly differentially expressed. Okay, so now maybe you might have noticed that these gene IDs are unrecognizable. In order for us to convert them into their gene names, we will use a tool called annotate DEC2. annotate dc2 so dc2 result file input file is keep it at default so for the reference annotation we select the string tie merge data file for the advanced options we keep it as default and press execute now again we wait this is the annotate dc2 job just finished let's take a look at the results so it's the same um, table as early on, but it gave out some additional columns. Column eight, it just uh, says tell us tells us to which chromosome that gene um, is located, and then at what base position to start and end sign, and which strand, and most importantly the gene name. So this is a gene called RGBD3. It was the one that was most significantly differentially expressed. So now we proceed to download this file. Let's see if it the desktop. Let's open it. It 
So this file is in tabular format. So for me, I personally want to save it as an Excel file just because it's easier to manipulate. And then I insert a header, header row because this one doesn't have headers. First column is a gene ID, base mean expression, log to full change, standard error, wall statistic, p value, ap value, chromosome location, start, and strand, and a gene name. Okay. So, if you notice, some of these genes have NA as gene name. So, this means that these genes are most likely novel genes or possibly novel isoforms that have not been previously annotated into a reference annotation. So, we would just be ignoring all those NAs. So, let, we will be filtering everything. So, again, we will not select for those that equal NA does not equal NA. Okay. Afterwards, we want to further select for those with a significant adjusted p-value. So, first, there are some genes here with an NA. So, we deselect those NA, meaning they were in other uncalculable p-values. Okay, after deselecting that, and then to make life easier, I often I want to copy this column into a new separate sheet. Then the log to full change and copy that too. And then as well as the adjusted p value. And then from here, we can further filter for those genes that were, let's say, we're interested in upregulated genes, so greater than zero, and then those that were, let's say, significantly differentially expressed, so that would be less than or equal to 0 0.05, my p-value is 0 0.05, okay? So now we have our lists of upregulated and downregulated genes. That's uh, our list of upregulated genes. Let's save that here. So rename this as up. Then let's say we want to only select for those that were downregulated, so less than zero. Okay, so let's again copy that, save that into a new separate sheet down okay oops okay so now we have our lists of significantly down regulated and up regulated genes we can now proceed to the final step which is gene ontology or pathway enrichment analysis so for pathway enrichment analysis i we could use either Panther or G-Profiler. The one that I really like is G-Profiler. So go to G-Profiler web server. Yeah. And all we need to do is to paste the list of genes that we had. So if we're going back to our uh, upregulated genes. We just need to copy this gene list. Paste it and run query. So the G-Profiler analysis is done. Let's have a look at the detailed results. So here we see all of the pathways that were enriched in our, um, uh, uh, in our cells. So we exposed the cells to a DNA damaging agent. So if we were to look at the responses that seem to be popping up, a lot of them appear to be involved in apoptosis here, which would be expected because DNA damaging agent would probably cause apoptosis. 
Yeah, we have a lot of signal transduction. What else? We also have we also have uh, PC3 signaling, which is expected because you know DNA damaging agent will cause uh, the activation of PC3. If we were to do the same for our uh, down-regulated genes. Let's erase all of that and let's paste our new query. So um, the G profile analysis for the down regulated genes is done. You can take a look at detailed results. So if we were look at we were to find which pathways appear to be down regulated, what we tend to see is that there seem to be a lot of these nuclear chromatin, chromatin, you know, mitotic processes involved. Um, and I would say that this is also quite expected because a DNA damaging agent would tend to cause cell cycle arrest. So a down regulation of a lot of these cell cycle and mitotic processes kind of leads to cell cycle arrest. So that's it guys. I hope you learned a lot. We've been able to cover most of how to use galaxy to perform rna seq analysis thank you for watching guys if you like this video please give me a like also don't forget to subscribe let me know in the comment section what other topics you'd want me to discuss till next time